Hello everybody and welcome to Storm Raids and today I'm going to be talking about Above Suspicion by Helen McInnes. So yeah, I decided to just do an actual like kind of book review on Above Suspicion. That way I could kind of give a little bit of background on the author and things like that. I like to do that with some of these uh, more retro type of books that I've been reading and everything. They're not books that you're gonna see everybody else talking about and so I thought it would be fun to do things this way. Now I do have a little bit of information over here on my computer that I will be uh, reading because I cannot remember everything. My memory is not that good. So if you see me looking over this way, that is why. And so uh, Helen McInnes was a born in Glasgow, Scotland, and she died uh, in 1985. She was, I think, 77 years old. So she's a Scottish-born American novelist, and she's known for her um, very realistic spy thrillers. And she must have enjoyed uh, writing from an early age because after she got her... Um, MA degree from the University of Glasgow. She stayed there as a special cataloger at their library. And then after a year of that, she entered into the School of Librarianship in London. And then she got married in 1932 to Gilbert Hyatt. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And they both worked together doing translations into German, from German, because they both spoke like fluent German and everything and then in uh, I think it was 1938 yeah 1938 he got a job at Columbia University and so they ended up moving to New York and so then that's where I think they stayed for most of their time together and I think in the 1950s I didn't write this down but um, they become like national citizens in like 1950 one or something like that. A few years after they moved there, Helen uh, penned her first novel, which is Above Suspicion, and it became an instant success for its suspense and its humor. And I was like, humor? I'm like, yeah, there was some humor in it. It did make me chuckle sometimes, so yeah. <laughs> so there was some humor. And it also got made into a movie in 1943. Um, called Above Suspicion, and it starred uh, Fred McMurray and Joan Crawford. I tried to find the movie, but it's not showing on anything free, of course, because they never are, and so I didn't get to try to watch the movie, but I will eventually try to track it down. I just didn't want to pay on Amazon Prime or anything like that for the movie, because I don't have that, but, you know, that's how it is. <laughs> anyway. Almost all of McInnes' books were bestsellers, and they were frequently translated and reissued. Several more were made into motion pictures, and critics and readers alike noted that McInnes' skill, skillful and credible portrayal of espionage and the characters involved in it. And she was credited, she credited her success to thorough research and interest in international politics. And so she wrote 21 novels, 18 of them are standalone, and she had one trilogy. And y'all know from any of the book hauls that I've recently hauled that all of a sudden I've been hauling a whole bunch of these um, Helen McInnes books. And I was like, I really should try one to see if I actually am going to like this author or not. And so since I had her very first book, I decided to read her very first one. This one, of course, was uh, written in 1941 and this copy that I have is from 1969. I was going to try to tell you who the cover artist is because I really do like the cover art on these old books and I decided you know I should really look up the cover art artist but I couldn't find anything. There's a an artist like signature right down here at the bottom but I cannot make it out for anything I've tried. If anybody knows how to find cover artists for these vintage novels, please let me know. I've scoured, I have tried every kind of word I could think of, 
to try to figure out who the cover artist is of this. You know, looking up, you know, Above Suspicion and the author, just the cover artist from the 1960s. I, but I just, I can't figure it out. I have no clue. So there, maybe there's something out there that I just don't know about. And if you know, please let me know. But yeah, but it's really cool. I really do like this. And I do think it really depicts um, a scene in the book, which is, is really cool too. After reading the book, you can look at the cover art and be like, oh, I remember like something like that happening in the book, which is kind of cool. So now about the book. So Above Suspicion is about a married couple, Richard and Francis, and Richard works at a college. And one day Francis was going to go meet him for like, I believe lunch. And so she goes to the college where they meet a friend, kind of a mutual friend that they have. His name is Peter. And he has an assignment for them. He needs them to go on holiday, take a vacation. And uh, while they're on this vacation, they need to go to Paris. And there's a certain place. He tells them all about like where they need to go, what they need to do. They need to meet this man kind of under, you know, the radar type of thing. There's certain things that they're supposed to do. And it's all, you know, all that spy stuff and everything. And basically, just act like a married couple that's on vacation because they think because they're not in, you know, they're not spies or anything like that. They are just ordinary people that maybe they would be above suspicion and stuff. And he needs them to do whatever the guy says at the first one and they'll be hopping around to different places and everything trying to find some information on an agent that has gone silent is he dead missing what they don't know but they need this information and we are right on the brink of world war ii there's the um, in Germany, there are the Nazis are all over the place. You've got um, men marching around. It's very, like the atmosphere is just very, very hard. You've everybody's scared. Um, they know that a war is coming, but it just hasn't come. It starts. It it's in 1939, and so uh, that's when it's said. So I mean, it is almost there. It's just not quite there, and everything. So they also the guy also picked them because Richard has a very good memory. Um, he has a way of looking at something and just it's it's in his head. I'm not really they don't really call it like a photographic memory, but they just said he had a, you know his memory was really good. But he's also very good at deciphering things. So like in one instance, he gets handed a book and. Uh, he has to look at this book. He has to find certain things in this book that is like very lightly marked. Like you can't even hardly tell it's there. And he has to decipher it to figure out where they're going next and things like that. He didn't want to, he, he didn't mind going. He didn't want to take Francis with him because he didn't want his wife in that kind of danger. But Francis was like, no, I'm going and we're going to do this together and everything. Uh, I think she thought maybe it would be a little bit um, more thrilling and not so scary, but it ends up being a little bit, you know, I mean, you know, you want some action, some, so you know, something that's a little bit, you know, it's, oh, you know, we're going to be spies, you know, I mean, it sounds fun in theory, right? <laughs> but yeah, when, when they get there, they meet some other people. There's an American that's there, and I can't remember his name, Van Cor... Van... Van... Anyway, I can't remember his name, and I should have wrote it down, but I didn't. And then they also meet a guy that they know from Oxford, I believe, and, uh, because that's where they are from that area. I forgot to say that they are in, like, England, so. And, uh, so they meet them, and they end up coming in handy later on. For me, I was like, are they to be trusted? Because <laughs> I'm like, you're doing all this like spy stuff and you don't know who to trust. I mean, and that's like a lot of it. You go to the place 
you hang around, you have to decipher, and you pick up the fact that um, even though they were supposed to be up above suspicion, anybody right now in this turmoil, if you're not from that area, you're going to be, you know, they're going to be suspicious of you. And they do have people following them, and they know that they have people following them, and they do some tricky things to get these people <laughs> away from them and stuff. But yeah, and I think a lot of the humor in the book always has to do with the American and the other guy when they're like all together, you know. And you have to make lighthearted of some of the situations that they're in to kind of, you know, just kind of make it, you know, not so bad. Um, but the thing is, with this book, there's not a lot of action. There's definitely an atmosphere, and there's a little suspense, and like the humor. But there's not a lot of action until, I don't know, like we're getting close to the end, <laughs> and stuff gets a little heated up. So, and in that way, I would say that this is not a stormy book. Anybody who knows me knows that I prefer a lot of action. I prefer things to progress very fast. But this didn't really do that. But at the same time, I was very invested in what was going on and everything. So I'm going to accredit that to the author and uh, her being able to keep me engaged and curious about what was going to happen even though all we're doing is following this married couple around from town to town so that they can try to figure out what's going on. They, you know, meet the first person, decipher what's going on. They, you know, make sure everybody knows that they're going somewhere else. They're going to be going to this other town because, you know, they're on vacation. <laughs> and, you know, that way people know what they're doing. And everything and then they go to the next place and they think they've got everything figured out and you're waiting there and you're wondering is the person going to show up is anything going to happen you know and there's a, a couple of times when they do bump into some people that are they gonna give them away or whatever you know there are some situations and then you've got some you don't know can these people uh, can they be trusted at all? Um, are they in with, like, the the Nazi party and everything? Are they siding with these people or these people? And how how do you you know translate that or whatever? How do you uh, you're having to stay at this place, so you have to kind of play it by ear, and you have to you know figure things. And it's got that kind of stuff. So I would say it's like the atmosphere and suspense is kind of like that kind of stuff. But it definitely didn't have like hardly any action or anything. This part here that I was talking about, like it doesn't really happen until, like I said, like later on when um, they're trying to hide from some people and everything and they're crouched down and they're, they're hiding. <laughs> so I, that's what that is and everything. So yeah. I, I really enjoyed it though. Overall, I'm going to give it like five stars because I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't, this is my first spy thriller, like older one. I have read a newer one. Like last year, I did participate in like PK's uh, Spy vs. Spy September and everything, and I liked it, but I don't really read spy novels. I've never really thought I would like spy novels. But then all of a sudden, I found this lady and all of her books. <laughs> And most of them, I think I've got them all like for like 50 cents a piece. And they're not in like bad condition for the age and everything and stuff. And so I'm like really curious to read more of her books. I actually currently have another one by my bed. I was going to try to go in order, but I don't have her second book, which was I think Assignment in Brittany. I think. I don't know if it's in here. Yeah. Assignment in Brittany. I don't have that one. But I do have a Why We Still Why Why Still We Live, which is the third book that she wrote. And so that one is over by my bed. 
and I'm currently reading on it and everything. So yeah, I'm very curious to read more. It's got me wanting to read her books, wanting to read more um, espionage books, actually. I'm kind of looking forward to some more kind of action-y type books like, you know, I have the the Executioner books and I have some other books and um, things like that. So, I'm, you know, yes, I like my romance, but I also am really getting into like things like this <laughs> and everything. So, um, I'm just really in my retro reading phase, I think, and I would just really prefer to read these than newer books right now. And so I think that's probably what I will be doing a lot of this year, hopefully, if I can fit it around some of my other things. I do have some obligations and some, you know, net galley books and things like that, but I do want to read more of these. It just takes me longer because, yeah, eyeball reading, but I did happen to find an audiobook, which kind of helped me get through it. But for the most part, I read most of this with my eyeballs. So, <laughs> so anyway. Let me know what you think. Would this book interest you? Does it sound, you know, like something you would like to read or want to read? I'm curious. I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun with it. And so I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.